Mm -hmm. Yes. Hello, Kane. Sorry for the music. <laughs> yes, it's going to be hard to hear. But go back. Hello. You are always uh, in the right shape, to, in the right physical form to make a new Russian movie. What's your training? Do you have a daily training? Training. Uh, push ups. Uh, training. Training. Do you train? Well, I mean, I am always in the gym mm -hmm. lifting weights. <laughs> always, every day. That's all I do, really. Every day. No running. I can't run anymore. My knees are bad. Uh, so. I just try to uh, work out as much as possible and eat properly and try and stay in shape because when you get older, man, it's harder. I'm 63, so, you know. Age is just a number. Oh, okay. <laughs> just a number. You, you tell me that when you're 63. <laughs> <laughs> Please put another song on. It's so easy to hear now. <laughs> um, if there ever was a um, Friday the 13th and Hatchet crossover, um, who would you rather play or who would win? Well, somehow I have to play both of them. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I don't care what the process would be, but I wouldn't want somebody else being the other character. And as far as who would win, um, I guess it would be a really good fight, <clears throat> but a very slight edge maybe to Victor because he's less predictable. Mm -hmm. So I think he's a little bit harder to defeat Maybe Jason is a little bit too much that you already know what he's going to do. So maybe, possibly, you could beat him easier. I don't know. It'd be interesting to see, though. Yeah. And thanks again for sending my DVD. <laughs> Hello. Uh, which role was more fun to play? Uh, Jason or Victor, which, which, which did you like more to play? Um, I'm not sure that I could say one or the other. I just, you know, because I did all the Jason movies in a row. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was a certain period of my career and I loved it. And then I didn't do anything like that for a little while. And then Victor came along and then I did four in a row of that character, so with whatever time period I was in, it was the, I would say, the most enjoyable overall looking back. I mean, I love playing both characters, but it's so much more difficult than you would think. I mean, there's so much makeup and everything glued to you and you're constantly uncomfortable and you have to do it for two to three months. Um, it's, it's always funny when I talk to people that say, um, I think I could play a character like that. Um, I always think, yeah, you think you can, but <laughs> you, you think you can do it for a few days maybe, but when you have to do it, every day for, like I said, sometimes three months, that gets really tiring. Because you, you don't have much time in between because if you have big makeup, you have to get to work three and a half hours before everyone else. And that's almost a half a day of regular working anyway. So you have to go in there three and a half hours early to get the makeup applied. Then you shoot for 12 hours. Then you take it off for an hour. It takes an hour to take it off. And then you have to sleep. So there's not much time to do anything but be angry on the set. And I am always angry. <laughs> and I think that's why it looks convincing because I really am 
fucking pissed off. Um, but, you know, it's, uh, even though it's incredibly hard, I just, I've always loved it. And I think that's what comes across in the performance that um, it's convincing. You know, that was my whole focus, was to make it look believable. Because so many people that play characters like this just look like they're acting to me. It doesn't look natural, it doesn't look believable. It makes me think, oh, that's a guy under a mask and he's trying to be scary. I don't want to, as an audience member, I just want to watch the movie and try and be scared, so. That's what I would say. Um, do you, did you watch your own movies and if, uh, which one of your own movies did you like the most? Well, I, I do try to watch any movie that I do. And, you know, it's not to, to really feed my ego or anything. It's just more to make sure I like what I did. And certain things I, I may watch and say, oh, I, I think I could have done that differently and it would have looked better. So next time I'll have that in my mind and I'll change it and maybe, maybe improve especially if it's the same character, or at least if it's a similar one, improve the performance. Um, and you can, you can add things to a performance after you've already shot some things, because I started shooting part seven, the first Friday the 13th I did, started shooting and I was watching what they call dailies. You could go watch what's been shot the previous day because they want to look at it, make sure they're happy with it. And I saw a couple of scenes of, of me as Jason, and I thought, oh, it, uh, you know, I got to do something else to make him look more terrifying. Because without your face and your voice, it's hard to be scary in a film. So I, next day I went to the set And I, when I had all the costume on and the makeup, I looked at myself in the mirror and stared and I said, what can I do to look more scary? And I tried a few things and then I, I tried the breathing thing that everybody talks about, um, where I just stand there and you know, do that. And then to me, as I watched myself in the mirror, I said, holy shit, that looks like he's about to explode. He's barely moving. And so that kind of became one of the trademark things that I did as the character, especially in part seven, because the makeup worked that way. And you just try to add things as you go. And favorite movies that I've done, that I've watched, certainly are the Friday ones and the Hatchet ones, but a couple others come to mind. I really like uh, a movie called Old 37. Um, if you've seen the movie, there's a scene where a police officer comes to investigate some disappearances of people and there. We run a junkyard, myself and Bill Mosley, we're brothers and we run a junkyard and he comes and talks to Bill trying to find out some information on missing people. And he, he's talking to Bill and then all of a sudden I kind of appear behind the police officer and startle him. And he says, uh, you know, he says something like, um, well that, that, that surprised me. Is there anyone else around here? And Bill would say, nobody here but us chickens. Just a common phrase, and then we cut. Then the next time we did the scene, the next take, um, Bill says, yeah, nobody here but us chickens. And then he looks at me because he's the abusive brother of the two. I'm kind of the dumb one that doesn't talk and stuff. And so he, 
just kind of uh, ad-libbed, if you know that phrase. Uh, he said, nobody here but his chickens, and he looks at me and says, hey, show him the chicken dance. And I'm like, oh boy, what's he talking about? Uh, he says, he makes, he makes me dance like a chicken and cluck around and make a fool out of myself because he thinks it's funny. And we did, I just went with it and uh, it was a brilliant thing for him to do because he humiliated me in a way that later on when I kill him, <laughs> the audience is like, yeah, he deserves it, the bastard. So it was something that wasn't even written and I thought it was uh, an interesting scene to put in there because it made you feel sympathetic toward my character and hate him more so that when that that killing happened later everybody was happy so anyway that's a kind of a long answer to a, a story but um i just like working that way Hi. Um, so, around the time that you took over the role for Jason in the Friday films, uh, starting around six, or you took over with seven, uh, the franchise was taking on a more, or at least a stronger sense of humor at the time, at least you can see, you can see that forming. And I also feel, though, when I watch them, though, that your time as Jason is also the films that have a stronger sense of intimidation to them, and in a sense, also even scarier, because it's a very aggressive version of Jason. So I wondered if what the difference for you would be in regards to trying to set up a laugh versus a good scare, if there is any difference, at least in your experience, of trying to achieve that in these films? Well, I mean, with the scare, certainly, I always have a lot of input. And typically, as you already know, probably, but, um, I like to scare people on the set, just for my own entertainment. <laughs> so I'll, I'll surprise some of the actors in ways, and just so I can get a little laugh out of it. And, and you know, I have talked about this before, like in the documentary and stuff, where I know that a certain actor or actress, their, their death scene is coming up. And they're a little nervous about it because they have heard that I can be a little rough when it comes to your death. And sometimes people are like, God damn, it was kind of a little much, wasn't it? And then they see it on the screen and they're like, oh, I'm so glad you did it that way because it looks amazing. But so very often while we're shooting, someone will be a little extra nervous that their death scene is coming up because they know I can be a little rough and they they have heard stories from other cast members about me might maybe being a little out of my mind for real so I'll I'll go with that and for instance I'll I'll know that a cast member is watching me while we're off set not on camera, just watching and, and I'll, I'll realize they're watching me, so I'll start doing things that make me look insane, like banging my head against a tree, or, you know, talking to myself and walking around in circles or something, just to make them even more uneasy about their scene coming up, and it always helps their performance if they're actually a little nervous about me in particular so uh, it's fun for me and it also helps the whole scene overall so maybe at last you told us a story yesterday that you after filming went into the woods in your costume mm -hmm. you scared somebody maybe you want to tell us that again for those who oh, weren't there um oh yeah i guess i could quickly uh staying in character when I'm off camera. Again, just like I was saying that I did with the, the actors watching me. Okay. Going back to my trailer, 
during a break, walking through the woods on a trail and seeing somebody coming towards the set. This is, you know, two or three in the morning. And I know it's not somebody from our film. So I think, hmm, I'm tired and cranky, so it's probably time to fuck with this guy. <laughs> um, so I had the mask on, and the hockey mask wasn't even off yet. And uh, I stopped on the trail, and he stopped, and forgive me for those of you that heard this yesterday, but he said, uh, are you with the movie? And I'm thinking, I'm wearing an entire costume with a hockey mask on. You know what movie it is, and you're asking me if I'm with the movie. So I just stared at him and did the breathing and tilted the head and lunged at him and he took off running. So um, he, I never saw him again. And the uh, next day the director said, uh, you know that local uh, police officer, the sheriff, never showed up at the set last night. He said he was going to come and visit. So he said, I don't know what happened. And I said, yeah, I don't know either. So, <laughs> There's a lot of stories like that. You should watch my documentary called To Hell and Back. Um, it's my life story, basically. And uh, it's not all fun stuff, but a lot of it is. So. Thank you so much for answering the question. Thank you, guys. Oh, wait, Pam had one last question. <laughs> I translate. Okay. Hai mai pensato di dirigere un film? Have you ever think to direct your own movie written and directed by Kate Hodder? Have I had ever directed a movie? Or in future? Or what? Or in the future? In the future, in the future possibly. Never have yet. And I've never really considered myself uh, capable of directing, but I also didn't think I could do anything but stunts either. When I was only a stunt person, I thought, oh, I'll never do dialogue and acting. And then I started doing that, and I was like, oh, okay, that's pretty good. And I, I now, I'm starting to think about possibly directing something, because that's the ultimate control. That's your movie that way. Because you have, you know, the control over every part of it, so... You watch, I'll maybe do that, Pam. Directed by Kane Hodder. Yeah. Thank you, guys.